linked up with you. They've, you know, they're resonating with, with you're resonating with them, they're resonating with you. And then from that point, if the rapport is strong enough, you can change what you're doing and they'll naturally follow you to maintain yeah. that sense of comfort. Yeah. And that's how you can get people out of manic states sometimes, is you get yourself into a state that they can feel like you understand them yeah. and then you move them out of it. Things like that. Yes. Manipulate. Manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that sounds very therapeutic. Is that for you in a young kid or when you're using it in that context? Neuro-linguistic programming. Right. That's what that is. Right, but is it like young men or 40 men or is it... I don't even think that, that distinction comes into it. No. Really? No. No. Richard cool. Bandler. Yeah. I think it does, yeah. Yeah. Think it does come out of a Freudian school. Freud is more well, authoritarian. I, I mean, as a basis, I, I'm not not out of Freud uh, per se. Well, you know, the concept of um, an evolved of, of, Freudian uh, school, an evolved Freudian technique, is hmm. what I would consider. Well, I know. I actually I agree with what you're saying because I mean the concept of what's the word I'm looking for. His whole thing was about watching people and, and categorizing mm -hmm. the, the, the power of the libido. Part of the libido for Freud is is fundamental, and a large part of where Crowley gets his idea of acting wholly self-interest. I mean that that comes directly out of Freud. The, the concept of uh, it also the, comes out of libido. Well, yes, <laughs> the concept of the person who is the alpha is acting wholly without regard for the other in any way, shape, or form. They're completely self-interested, and in a way, there's a logistic power that um, they see that as being like that's why people will follow them because. You know, we ha we have a fascination with these characters in our culture. Mm -hmm. Look at any TV show; you probably find one person who's just an asshole and doesn't care about anyone. Who, in real life, would never be successful, and for some reason on this show, is, has everything they want. <laughs> like, look at House. Perfect. That, that's my, my probably my favorite example. Yeah. Like, Quite where would this Ramsey. person? <laughs> where would this successful. person be in real life? <laughs> no one would. No, they, they would never. But, but and yet somehow they have all the money they want. They can do whatever they want, and they can treat people however they want in their entire life. And we all admire them and laugh at them and think they're amazing because they're just such a prick that we like them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually that makes me. I was my. I'll keep it simple. My brother. Is somewhat like that, and his his youngest daughter is like that, and uh, she's really it's quite bad. She's only nine, oh, wow. and nobody in the family wants her in their house oh, oh, wow. because she is just so totally, totally involved and so quite unpleasant. I mean, she calls um, uh, calls her grandmother dummy and <laughs> and writes letters to leaves notes for people saying you dummy. And, like and so she's not liked by anybody, and she's not going to be successful. But you never know; she might find. Well, that's the thing. Is like it's interesting when I find these like she TV yes, she, she, she will. You can't climb friend. without being an asshole. You have to be a good CEO. So just too bad. <laughs> this is the thing. Like when you look at these pieces of fiction, and you know, okay, like I was talking about the abuser mentality before. Perfect example. We've all seen The Sopranos, right? Everyone is alive and yeah. not been in a cave for the last decade, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm in a Baroque music cave. <laughs> oh, well, the point is, this is a show, okay, very simply, it's a show about a guy who's an abusive husband or an abusive uh -huh. father. However, he's also a mafia boss. Mm -hmm. So when he comes home in a shitty mood and he's shitty to his wife and kids, it's because he just killed his best friend the other day. You oh. know what I mean? Like, he has a good reason. <laughs> he just can't tell anyone, right? And this is the this is the cloak of mystery that goes around the abusive man in a relationship. Is oh, we don't know what's going on with him. It could be anything, and apparently it's something really intense because he. But in reality, it's just he had a shitty day at work. It's not he's not Tony Soprano. He didn't just cap his best friend. He's just he's just being shitty because he's a shitty person. And this is uh, where all this thing comes back to. We will respect these assholes if they have the weight behind them. We know that they're doing all this shit house I mentioned before. Oh, he's saving lives every week. So, well, of course, he gets the right to be an asshole because these people will be dead without him and so on and so forth. But the reality is most of the people who act this way are just shitty people. Yeah. And the reason yeah. for the success of these things is that people want to you know, 
we build big things live, by our history. By yeah, we want we want to believe the mythology about ourselves. Yeah. We want to believe. We want to identify through these fantasies. That's yes. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And exactly. that's why these things are successful because, of course, they're unrealistic. Right. You know. So. It's Although, survival. I mean, if that was a real guy, we would probably still respect him because he is really saving lives, however big a prick he is. But at the same time, it's like there's no one really like that. <laughs> well. Yeah, I think that, you know, you'd have to call that into question, because if that... Elton he John. Might, a lot, he might have the respect of an awful lot of people, but he probably wouldn't have a job. Right. You know, so he wouldn't have that position. So he wouldn't be coming into contact well, I've, I've with as many people. people. Elton in John! ...positions or whatnot that are totally shitty people mm -hmm. and totally, uh, you know, uh, use that on other people, but everybody's forward. afraid to do anything against that them. That much of a jerk? Not, maybe not to that. I don't know. I've seen some pretty horrible people. Like, just walking well, through when I was at a job where I was picking up paper for shredding, when I'm going through the courthouses and stuff like that. There's just some pieces of shit that like, mm -hmm. can like, yeah. get away with it because of their position and yeah. people are afraid Mind of you, you're so surrounded with there. lawyers there, so I need lawyers well, yeah. lawyers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I met a judge once. I went to, one of my friends was uh, trying to learn English from Montreal, and she was working as a nanny for this. Um, Supreme Court judge, okay. and I went to her house, and um, when I went in, I went to shake her hand to say hello, because I'm in her house, and she wouldn't even look at me or talk to me, and she just walked out of the room. <laughs> if you put all of your free time and all of your professional time, and a good portion of, like, you know, like if you spend, let's say, 70 hours a week <clears throat> developing a specific skill... You might not learn any interpersonal skills, yeah, but, I think it's also but you can, you know, you can still be a killer songwriter and make a billion dollars and be and 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 still be and you know and and you're 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 the cornerstone of the culture, even though you're on heroin and beat your wife. <laughs> but I think that's a good example of what you're talking about with the uh, lead, the different types of leader, the uh, authoritative, and the, uh, um, the entitled. So it's the entitled. You know, it's that even if it is, they do have a skill or whatever. It's like the feeling of entitlement that I can be an ally and let all my shit out on people or something like that because I'm in a position of entitlement. Yeah, because a lot of these people are not in positions of authority, really. You know, like they don't. They don't they do. And there may be a balance, you know, it may be a trade off. It's like a, they have a special skill or they have a means of sort of keeping and maintaining that position. Yeah. Well, one example I have with that is that I'm a church organist and church. Very often, church ministers um, are very skillful at knowing who they can have this entitlement thing for, and it's usually with the other employees, like the organist especially. And the, the, the church, United Church where I work, it's been the case that um, the minister was very good at projecting niceness and whatever was necessary to keep a job make her popular with the congregation, but with all the employees, it was quite a different mm. case. And for a long time, she, you know, she wouldn't even talk to me. This was after the, the uh, times had been screamed at. Um, so I guess the talk, not talking was better. Um, but, but being she, an you know, organist in a church is a very precarious position, because there yeah. are like a hundred people in the congregation who want your job. <laughs> well, they're used to be. <laughs> they're used to be. But, okay, and if not, if not in the congregation, there are a hundred musicians out there who would gladly take your job just for the free time to practice. Uh, no, because well, we don't, just don't, are not paid enough. Uh, there's no yeah, but it's free, free practice. <laughs> oh, free, oh, you mean having a place free to practice? Free practice on a really nice... Equipment, like well, there are actually very few organists around now. There are now, yeah, yeah. because like just 